In this screencast lecture, we will see the points related to chemical mutagens. In general, chemical mutagens can able to induce mutation through three different ways. The first one is, the chemical mutagen acts as a basic analogs whose structural similarity to one of the bases among the four bases there in the DNA enables it to act as a mutagen. The classical example for base analog is a bromouracil. You will see the details in the last. The next one is, some kind of chemical mutagens can able to react directly with the nitrogenous base, that is with the amino groups and they can able to cause certain structural changes there in the organisms. And the third one, mutagen can act indirectly on the DNA. They do not themselves affect the DNA structure but instead cause the cell to synthesize chemicals such as peroxides that may inflict a mutagenic effect there on the cell. Among these three, the first two things are very important from the standpoint for our examination. Now, we will see in detail about the different kinds of chemical mutagens that are all acting on the DNA molecule. The first one is a base analogs. These are the chemical that resembles the DNA nucleotide but pair incorrectly when they are actually incorporated there into the DNA. Thereby, they can able to cause the mutagenesis in the organism. Where these particular chemicals are finding an application there in the biology is to use in the drugs. Say for example, new AIDS hemotherapeutic drugs are mainly some kind of a base analogs of nitrogenous bases that are inserted there into a viral or a infected cell's DNA and thus the inserted cell's DNA cannot be able to properly transcribe. As a result, the viral growth can be slowed down there on the organism. In the right hand side, you can able to see the diagram which is showing the base analog that is bromouracil. Bromouracil is a base analog to that of the thymine. You can able to see the structure of thymine and bromouracil are same with a single change there in the presence of a bromine group whereas the in bromouracil and methyl group there in the thymine. What happens exactly inside the system? Naturally, DNA polymerase cannot be able to distinguish between a thymine and a 5-bromouracil as both are all in the same shape or in similar shape. So, once incorporated into the DNA molecule, the 5-bromouracil however tend to rearrange the structure in such a way it resembles to that of the cytosine. As a result, that can be able to pair with the guanine. Originally, the type of base pairing present there was A to T base pairing whereas it has now changed into G to C base pairing. The type of mutation caused due to the base analogs is a point mutation. One more example for a base analog is 2 amino purine. The next group is deaminating agents. The name itself says that these are all the chemical agents that can be able to cause point mutation mainly by removing the amino group from the bases. The important chemical here is a nitrous acid which can able to deaminate all the three different forms of the bases that is adenine, cytosine, guanine. However, it cannot be able to act on the thymine mainly due to the reason that thymine does not contain any amino group. One more deaminating agents that is of a much use there in the mutation creation is sodium bisulfide which mainly acts on the cytosine. Now, we will go into detail about the nitrous acid. We already seen that it can able to deaminate adenine, cytosine, guanine, only thymine cannot be deaminated by the nitrous acid. Here it deaminates cytosine to produce uracil molecules which base pairs with adenine that is a basic G to C base pairing is get altered and it is turned into a A to T base pairing upon subsequent replication there with the help of the DNA polymerase enzyme. The next one is it can able to deaminate adenine to produce a guanine analog called as a hypoxanthine, this also create a mutation in such a way a normal A to T base pairing is now converted into G to C base pairing. The next group is alkylating agents. These are all the chemicals that had hydrocarbon or alkyl groups there to the nucleotide bases and this can be able to cause a mispair between the bases there. Examples of certain alkylating agents include ethyl methane sulfonate called as a EMS, ethyl ethane sulfonate called as a EES 
and methyl methane sulfonate that is commonly called as a MMS. This group of compounds are potent mutagens commonly used in the laboratories as well as certain compounds that can be released there into the environment such as a mustard gas as well as a nitrogen mustards. This image explains the mechanism of action of the alkylating agents namely ethyl methane sulfonate especially on guanine as well as thymine. When it acts on guanine, the guanine is converted into a alkylating agent of a ethyl guanine. So, this ethyl guanine is the one which mimics as that of the adenine. So, a original G to C base pairing is now altered into a A to T base pairing. The next condition is with the thymine. When thymine has been subjected with the chemical agent that is ethyl methane sulfonate, it is again converted into an alkylating agent of a ethyl thymine. Again, this ethyl thymine is the one which is having a analogous structure as that of the cytosine. So, a normal AT base pairing is altered into a GC base pairing. The type of mutations commonly caused by these alkylating agents is of point mutation. Other examples of alkylating agents includes dimethyl nitrosamine as well as the hydroxylamine. Hydroxylamine is the one which acts as a mutagen but its mode of action is different from that of other alkylating agent. It mainly causes the GC normal base pairing into a AT base pairing. It preferentially hydroxylates the amino nitrogen of the cytosine creating a N4 hydroxy cytosine molecule which can able to mispair there with the adenine. Certain alkylating agents produce lesion that usually have to be repaired in order to prevent serious disruption to the process of transcription or replication there in the cell. Processing of this lesion by the cell may sometimes give rise to mutations by indirect mutagenesis process. The next one is intercalating agents. They are flat molecules containing several polycyclic rings that can bind equally flat purine or pyrimidine bases there in the DNA. They will be just like bases binding or stacking on each other in a double helix molecule. Intercalating agents includes proflavin, ethidium bromide. Ethidium bromide is the one which is commonly used there in a laboratory to visualize the DNA. They can able to cause the deletion or addition of the base pair. Even sometimes they can able to delete few base pairs there in the nucleotide strand. When such deletions or addition arise in a gene, they have a profound influence there on the translation of its mRNA because the coding sequence will be shifted that is a frame shift will be resulted there. Thus, the intercalating agents cause insertion and deletions type of mutations. First, we look at the case of an insertion. When they, they are getting inserted there, they slip between the bases in a template strand. And this mutagen causes the DNA polymerase to insert an extra nucleotide opposite to that of the intercalated molecule. Thus, the intercalation of one of these structures approximately doubles the typical distance between the two base pairs. Whereas, the condition is of a deletion, the distortion to the template caused by the intercalation of a molecule, maybe of a ethidium bromide, proflavin or acridine orange, they make the polymerase to skip a nucleotide. This will result in the production of a faulty proteins. Thus, intercalating agents are classified as a highly hazardous mutagenic group of molecules. As a final part of the lecture, we will try to understand something about the teratogens. Teratogens are refers to the agent that causes abnormal development of the embryo, which usually results in a gross structural defects. Teratogens may or may not able to cause mutation, but they can able to cause structural defects there on the person. The most famous example is a thalidomide. It resulted in the birth defects, mainly by formation of malformed children. That is, children have been formed with missing limbs. So, you can able to see the photo of the children doesn't have a limbs there. You can look at the hands as well as legs that have been missing there. It is mainly caused due to the teratogenic effect. That is the effect that is caused on the embryo, the growing embryo that had result in the formation of the children with missing limbs. Salidomide interferes with the development of embryos 
as opposed to causing mutations. Although the mechanism of the thalidomide action that is mainly on the malformation of the limbs were really remains uncertain that is the exact mechanism is not known. However, they say that thalidomide prevents the blood vessels from forming that is it is an anti-angiogenic inaction which may partly explains the drug's ability to cause different kinds of birth defects there on the children. Basically, thalidomide is an immunomodulatory drug can also be used in treating certain cancers and complications associated there with the leprosy. Another classical example is the Zika virus which is regarded as a teratogen that is causing birth defects like microcephaly as well as serious brain anomalies. So, here you can able to see the microcephaly condition, the normal head size and the size of the head has been reduced there in the persons who have been affected with the Zika virus. And the third is the one which shows a severe microcephaly condition resulted due to the Zika virus.